Hi everyone, my name is Kinya Ota. I have spent more than 10 years studying goldfish evolution and development. Recently, my friend asked me to make detailed videos about the evolutionary developmental biology of goldfish. So I have decided to produce this video series based on my papers and my book. We will explore goldfish evolution. In previous video, we discussed the embryonic development of goldfish. If you happen to check that video, please check the link in the description. Let's take a look how baby goldfish grow up together. Before hatching, the embryo uses the yolk to grow. After hatching, the yolk is gradually consumed until it's completely gone. After hatching is very different from before hatching. Hatched goldfish larvae start to eat. So, not only temperature but also the quality and quantity of food affect their growth. Additionary factors such as the tank size, tank placement, and the fish density have a greater influence on growth compared to the embryonic developmental stage. It is natural for there to be differences in growth between goldfish raised in a large pond with a few individuals and a large amount of food, versus in a small tank with limited food. Even if we don't take it such extreme, replicating the same growth process in different environments is incredibly difficult as you can understand. So in this video, we will explain how the hatched larvae transform into the adult fish under the breeding condition in our laboratory. Three days after fertilization, immediately after hatching, the swim bladder is not yet developed, so they can't swim stably. This makes it difficult for them to chase and catch food. However, since there is still yolk in their bellies, they can still okay. They respond to external stimuli by swimming around, but they mostly stick to the bottom or wall of the tank. One day after hatching, it's around four days after fertilization. Around this time, the swim bladder gradually develops. In some individuals with rapid growth, the swim bladder starts to functioning. This silver part is the swim bladder. Once it develops, they can maintain their posture and swim well in the water. Although there is still yolk in the bellies, they can chase and eat food. Just add some paramecia into the tank, not too much to make the water dirty, and the goldfish larvae will start to eat them. It is five days after fertilization. They now have a very eager to eat expression. Let's compare them to the goldfish from the previous stage. Their mouth seems to open more forwardly and their lower jaw appears stronger. With these well-developed jaws, they can now catch a slightly larger prey. So at this stage, when you give a brine shrimp to them, they eagerly chase after it. You can easily identify goldfish that have eaten brine shrimp because their belly is turned orange. These brine shrimps are around uh, 0.4 mm in length, so by comparing the size of brine shrimp and goldfish babies, you can understand their growth process. 18 days have passed since fertilization. They have clearly grown larger compared to the newly hatched larvae. Dramatic changes in appearance occur within two weeks of hatching. Their mouths are even larger now and their bodies are also larger, allowing them to easily group down brine shrimps. Let's also take a look at their fins. Their caudal fins are well developed. Both dorsal and anal fins are clearly visible. Within these fins, there is a skeletal structure called fin rays for support. Let's compare them to the larvae of 5 days after fertilization. At this stage, both the dorsal and the anal fin as well as the caudal fin are all attached as one membrane. As growth progresses, they begin to separate like this. Also pay attention to the swim bladder. Depending on the individual, you may notice an increase in the number of the swim bladders appearing like silver balls from 1 to 2. Yes, during these two weeks, various tissues and organs develop while we weren't watching. 
I'm sure some of you would like to know in detail what happened during this time. Let me explain a bit about the difficulty of observing the growth process of hatching larvae and juvenile. In previous video, we were able to show you the process of embryonic development using time-lapse video. Phenomena occurring during embryonic development are generally captured within a few days, at most three days. So we are able to capture desired movies within a short shooting time, however, the growth of the hatching larvae progresses on a daily basis, and the fish move around. This makes it difficult to capture their changes continuously on video. Tracking the growth process of the same individual is particularly challenging. Don't worry. In our laboratory, we have already succeeded in detailed observations of the growth process of goldfish after hatching many times. And we have published these findings in scientific papers. Okay, let's continue. The outlines are already resembling those of other goldfish. They are clearly different from the size of brine shrimp. When they open their mouth, they can suck food from a slightly distant place. And we have observed new features that were not seen before. Pay attention to the pelvic fins. You can see that pelvic fin of the 80 days old goldfish are protruding slightly, whereas those of the individuals 26 days old are flatter, broader, and have fin rays. I'd like to talk about more about the sequence of appearance of these fins, but uh, that's for the another video. 46 days after fertilization, despite their small size, they possess the same characteristics as a adult fish. All their fins have well-developed fin rays. So at this point, they are transforming from larva to juvenile. There's also much debate about the definition of larvae and juveniles. Juveniles are generally defined as having the same organs as adult fish, but lacking reproductive capability. So let's compare and confirm. Yes, upon comparison, you can see that the individuals on the 26 days old goldfish has a membrane in front of the cloaca. This is a feature not found in adult fish. On the other hand, in the individual on 46 days post fertilization, this membrane has completely disappeared. Moreover, scales have emerged. By observing the presence of scales and the absence of this membrane, we can differentiate between larvae and juveniles. 48 day post fertilization goldfish also has well formed scales, so it can be classified as a juvenile. By this time, color variations also become apparent. These are the goldfish that have passed one year since fertilization. When kept in large outdoor tanks, they easily grow larger. Male reproduce sperm and some large female can lay eggs, making them useful for developmental biology experiment. Furthermore, they continue to grow even larger in second year and third year. After this size, they reproduce a lot of eggs. These goldfish are kept separately by male and female, and artificial fertilization is performed during spawning season. If you haven't watched the video on artificial fertilization of goldfish yet, I will also provide a link to it in the description, so be sure to check it out. We briefly explained the process from larvae to adult goldfish. Now for the preview of the next video. So far, we've shown you artificial fertilization, embryonic development, and the growth of the larvae, but we haven't touched much on the observation method. Therefore, in the next video, we will also explain these technical aspects. It is time to say goodbye. I hope you learned something new about goldfish development and evolution from this episode. Please be sure to subscribe to our channel to catch the next episode. See you soon!